All right. This video is an introduction to lessons 1 through 24, which is an orientation to word processing using Microsoft Word. Now, if you're already familiar with Word, how to open, close, um, use the scroll bar, save, etc., then this may be just an overview, a quick overview. But there will be a few things you learn in here, so please, um, you know, just listen to it. You can listen to it once. If, pardon me, if you want to do it, listen to it many times. If you're not familiar with Word, you might want to go through this video several times with Word open. Okay, so I'm going to open Lesson 21 here, and you can see I've already done it. My screen is a little bit um, small, so I'm going to be having to use the scroll bar because it, it helps the video become better. But I'm going to go to this part, which is the introduction to word processing, and it tells you to get your document processing manual. And those don't come along with your books. Um, that's one way we could save some money for the students on the textbook and by not including it. So um, we have them in the keyboarding lab. They're in the open lab, which is um, SHL 023. And for the most part, you really don't need it if you're already familiar with Word. If you're not familiar with Word, then you might want to look through the small book for these chapters and do a little of the practice exercises. The practice exercises are not something you turn in, you don't upload them into here, they're not graded, um, but they're just there for you to practice with if you're unfamiliar with Word. So in here, to get the check mark, the little green check mark, you need to read through this and you need to make sure you push both of these buttons. Now, when you first open this, it'll ask to default to Word and you say okay. You can be using Word 07, 2010, or 2013 like we're using in the lab. And it will open up in a weird view and let me see if I can get it. It'll be in this view and all I have to do is click view and edit document. And then it will switch to this normal view. So on the home tab the um, chapters 21 through 24 will introduce you to um, fonts, to font sizes, um, to bold, italicize, and underline. It'll talk about selecting text, and it talks about um, saving files. Now, this is the quick access toolbar up here, and you can see on mine, I have some different things turned on. And I turn them on, and I turn them off, by just choosing the check mark. And I believe down in the labs, I'm up in my office, but down in the labs, this is what it will look like. And you can turn on the print preview or the quick print and the spelling and grammar, um, but when you come back the next day, they will not be turned on. They're, if someone turns them on in the morning, they'll be there all day, but in, at C Clark, we have something on the computers that no matter what the student changed during the day, it will be flushed at night and they open up brand new like they've never been worked on again. So that helps keep the, uh, the keyboarding labs um, safe from viruses and stuff. So you might have to turn these things on um, when you come in if you want them on on your quick access toolbar. Or you can use the file menu because print and print preview are here on the, and save are here under the file menu. So here's save and save as. This has a name, but um, if I click save as, it will ask me where I want to save it. You can save it to a flash drive, um, but most of the documents you work with in the keyboarding lab, you're going to upload them right away back into GDP. And once you've uploaded them back into GDP, they're there saved for you. So you don't have to put them on a flash drive and carry them around. They're already in the keyboarding program. Um, so I think the keyboard labs default to my docs. So I'm going to call this practice 21.2 and it's in the documents library. You can see my office. I have a lot more things in there. Um, and I'm going to say, okay, upload it to the newest version. Um, and let's see, if I want to close, I can use the X up here. I can go back to the file menu. I can say close. Um, and you can read this paragraph. It talks about how 
the um, you can easily correct by using the backspace or I would even say the delete key. So here's my cursor blinking in backspace. If I hit backspace, it goes to the left and starts deleting. And if I hit the delete key, it starts deleting from the right. So you might try using both of those. I will also say I'm going to turn the show height on here. And that's this little paragraph button. And that shows all of the non-printing characters. So I'm going to hit the, the um, uh, well, I want to hit the tab key. OK, let me hit the tab key here, because I want to show you this non-printing character. That's the um, non-printing character for tab. This is the non-printing character for the Enter key. So every time I hit the Enter key. Um, this is the non-printing character for the space bar. So every time I hit the space bar, it's there. Um, I'm getting rid of these. And I can also hit undo, 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 or redo, redo, redo. So use those little buttons. They're very handy. Um, I'm going to hit the backspace key. Also on my office here, I always have the ruler showing in Word. So I'm not quite sure if that will be turned on down in the labs. It might look like this. And if you go to View and Ruler, then the ruler often shows information. Here's my first line indent. Um, I have a, a whole uh, indent of the whole paragraph. So you might want to turn your ruler on or get used to seeing it. Here's my margin. I can move my margin. So there's some things you can do with your ruler on. And those you might get to later. The other thing this chapter talks about is the zoom. And you can see in here, this is zoomed at 120. And I can zoom it bigger. It's at 150 now to be able to see more. I can go back out to 100%. I'm in the scroll bar here on the left. I can scroll up and down. I can use the scroll bar on my mouse. It's going up and down. I don't know if you can hear that little scroll. So there's different ways to view the document. Lesson 23 talks about changing a font and a style. So let me click on typing. And you can see I have a small, uh, it's not the quick access toolbar. It's, I'm not quite sure what this is called. It's the same as up here. So I can use it down here. Let me go, I can use it here. I'll change it to this. Or I can use it up here and it does the same thing. I can use my uh, grow font, or I can use the down arrow and grow or shrink font here. Okay, I tend to, now that these are in the um, ribbon area, I, I just tend to use these myself. Um, if I wanted to have, it goes, you know, 12, 14, 16, 18. If I wanted to see what 15 looked like, I could actually type 15 in there and hit the Enter key. And so I don't have to have I don't have to choose only what they give me. I can choose what I want and type it in. Um, it also talks about the help feature, which the help feature is the question mark. You know, Microsoft puts a lot of uh, effort into their help feature, but we often don't use it. And I think because we don't often know the words to use to find the information we need. So, for example, if I wanted um, keyboard shortcuts, let's see what happens. So I have to use the word sh shortcuts, and here's keyboard shortcuts for Word. So when I click on that, it's going to give me some information, finding and using keyboard shortcuts. So here I could read through, and then here's a whole list of the shortcuts, the, the shift key, the F6, etc., etc. So you kind of have to know what words to ask, but you can surely use help. I mean, help is very useful. Um, don't forget that we have our undo and redo buttons up here. Undo, undo, redo, redo, redo. Those are helpful. Um, it will undo. You can see all of the things I did. Let's go all the way back. I could undo all the way there. The redo doesn't have that same thing. I could just tell it to redo everything. 
but then I can undo again all the way to there. Okay, last couple of things in here. Um, chapter 24, we'll talk about autocorrect. And so autocorrect is a feature, for example, if I type the word the wrong, it, it corrected it for me. And you can see it capitalized it. Let me type that wrong. So there's often things that it will fix for you. Um, but it doesn't fix everything. But let's auto-correct or auto-complete, actually, the date. So if I start to type the date in there, you can see that it pops up there and it tells me to press Enter. Usually when I hit Enter, Enter will go down. But in this case, when I hit Enter, it puts the date in for me. And then if I want to go down, I hit Enter, Enter again. Okay, so last thing, if I wanted to print this on the file menu, uh, I mean, I could have used my little shortcut button up there, but here's the file menu. Here's the, it's called the backstage view, and here is what will be printed. And again, remember, I have my screen a little bit um, crunched up for the video. So I could just see what I want, see both pages, and hit print. Um, I could print uh, certain pages, print current page. I could tell it what page, at page three, if I had more than one page, I don't. Um, and yours will automatically print two-sided downstairs. Our uh, keyboarding, our, our printers in the keyboarding lab automatically use uh, double-sided. So don't worry if that happens, we expect it. So last thing I didn't talk about, and let me go back to here, is spelling and grammar. I'm going to open another document for that. I'm going to close this, and I'm not going to save it. And so I've that was the download file, and now I'm going to click Start Work, because you have to um, open both of these files to get that green check mark. And when I click Start Work, um, it's a blank document. And what it has you do, and usually what happens is, you start with a blank document and you type something. You start with um, letters, uh, correspondence, business letters. So you insert, oh, you go down five, one, two, three, four, five, and you insert the date, and then you insert um, an inside address, Ms. Smith, something. So, the start work will usually be a blank document. And let's now that I've opened both of these files, when I click Next, that's when you'll get the um, green check mark. So now it took me to Lesson 22. Well, I've already done Lesson 22 word processing. And in fact, I want to open Lesson 24. So I'm going to hit um, Download File. And in here, it usually there are red squiggly underlines and there's some misspelled words. So let me misspell a couple of these. Um, there. So a red squiggly underline does not necessarily mean it's spelled wrong. It, oh, here they are down here. It means that it's not in the dictionary. But in fact, this is spelled wrong and I could go to um, the spelling and check, uh, spelling and grammar, and it says, that's recorded. Do you want recorded? I can change it. And during, I can ignore it. I can ignore all. I can change, change all, okay? But look, it didn't find um, my word machine up here wrong, right? Even though it is spelled wrong. So you can't dis depend on spell check Please, let me reiterate that. You cannot depend on spell check to proofread your document. You have got to proofread it yourself. Something like from and form. Here is from, but if I typed form, form is a real on information form. That's real English. So there could be something on the information form. So it did not find that error, but it is an error. And you'll, you'll get that error when you upload a document um, back up to SIMNET, I mean back up to GDP. Now ReadyLine has a squiggly underline, but that's the name of a company. So I'm going to um, 
not do it this way. I'm going to do it another way. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to right click. And one of the things I could do is I could ignore all of them or I can add it to my dictionary. Now if this if I was working in a company, I would surely add the name of our company to the dictionary and then never have to worry about it again unless I spelled ready line wrong. Um, but if you add it to your dictionary here at Clark, again, whatever you do to the, to the um, computers will be gone tomorrow, so it will not be in the dictionary um, when you uh, start the computer the next day. Okay, so I'm just going to ignore all. And I'm going to close this. Oh, it's complete. You're good to go. All right, so now I can close this. Um, I'm not going to save it because it's just practice and I'm going to click next and that's it. That's lessons 21 through 24. So um, if you want to look at that small manual, just read through it quickly. Make sure that it didn't give, there's not any new information in there. But otherwise, um, if you're at home and you don't have the manual, this video should get you through that. Okay, so just remember to Click on the download file, the start file, open them both, see if there's anything that you can read, and then click the next button. All right, have fun.